All right, everybody. Welcome back to the day in progress. Uh, had a couple of other mop-up items uh, that I had to get done this morning. Ended up uh, here at the warehouse for a little bit and uh, swapped out the CB500X for the Riker so I can get the Riker out on the road and uh, give it a bath. It's filthy. Uh, uh, top up the battery, uh, make sure everything's good to go on it. It's had a fresh service uh, just before I parked it many months ago. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, oil change and belt uh, replacement at 12,000, all that. Brand new front tires, new alignment, pretty much new rear tire. Uh, so this thing is uh, going to get cleaned up, polished up, and uh, put on the auction block maybe as early as this weekend. So I'm taking it home tonight. Uh, need to clean out these rusty old wheel hubs. Everybody that owns these first gen Rikers will tell you about the the rusty <laughs> that started rusting the very first time it got wet. Oh, I was so pissed off. Like, really? You guys can't anodize that? Anyway, clean it up a bit and uh, sell it with all the accessories. I got the you know, side bag. I got multiple rear plates that mount on this, and uh, even a, a cooler. I got the you know the the Sea-Doo slash Can-Am uh, beverage cooler that goes on the back there. Anyway. Time to go. I'm gonna run this thing over to my next client site and uh, uh, hopefully that won't be uh, too long, too late today. Get home at a reasonable time today, maybe beat some of the rush hour, we'll find out. I'll give this thing a good washing uh, over the weekend and clean it up, make it pretty, take a bunch of pictures and see if somebody wants to take her off my hands. I do need to get one more recall done on it. I received the uh, wiring harness recall uh, that has been a open issue pretty much since uh, middle of 2019. Uh, everybody started figuring out that these were eating the uh, wiring harnesses. Uh, the front wheels were dragging, or front tires I should say, are dragging on the wiring harness and eating it through, which causes you to lose your signal over there and the uh, uh, it throws VSS faults and stuff like that. So, anyway. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, no, I'm not. Holy shiza. That guy came out of nowhere. Going fast. Uh, so, the uh, other recalls have all been done. Wheel nuts, uh, all that kind of stuff. I'm not waiting anymore, dude. Um, wheel nut recall has been done on it. Uh, other recalls anything that was open that I knew about and only knew about it by going to the dealer for routine service they went oh yeah you got open uh, recalls and TSBs on this really I haven't heard about them thanks Can-Am appreciate that uh, advanced notification about a critical safety issue uh, <laughs> I digress but I did receive the uh, the wiring harness uh, TSB or the actually it's a uh, federal recall you know it has to be done uh, that seems like the only ones that Can-Am sees fit to tell their owners about. The Honda and other brands of uh, cars and motorcycles that I've owned over the years, Yamaha, all of them, even Kawasaki, uh, they are very proactive about their notifications. As soon as there is a uh, an active critical service bulletin or any kind of recall, they mail out uh, official letters to you. Uh, you know, they've got the owner's information on file, obviously. And... Uh, yeah, they're always real proactive about it, even for relatively minor stuff like, uh, you know, fuel pumps and you know, stuff like that. But Can-Am has been very lax in their notification uh, about safety recalls. I didn't even know that this one was under the wheel nut recall until uh, the dealer told me about it, and I never received a, uh, a notice in the mail. So, yeah, crazy. The other thing that could be done, should be done, I'll see if I can get it done uh, before I sell it, is uh, there is finally a formal uh, service bulletin, potentially even a recall related to the steering angle sensor, yaw sensor on these things, going out and causing VSS faults and limp mode and stuff like that. Uh, and it's also something that causes alignment issues, very similar to the problems that I've had with this since day one. Uh, the pitman arm has to be replaced and there's a spacer uh, 
washer collar or something that's put uh, in the steering that is supposed to tighten everything up and make it less prone to errors and uh, erratic handling so I don't know that may be what's been wrong with this all along uh, and the dealer wasn't able to identify or isolate that stop before the intersection uh, yeah in here Let's see if I can get all that stuff done and out of the way and then I'll uh, sell it off let somebody else play with it for a while because I haven't been riding it the CVT thing uh, when it just hand grenaded and apparently that's becoming a much more common issue with the 2019s people are reporting a lot of CVT failures on these at you know randomly uh, short mile intervals uh, you know, like under 15,000 miles, some of them under 10,000 miles, and the, the CVT rollers uh, are hand grenading. That's what happened to this one. So, I don't know. Newer ones don't seem to be having the same problems. Uh, maybe it was uh, tolerances or bad production batch or something like that, but at any rate, Can Am should have warranted that, and they didn't. They said that that's a wear item and they don't care. It's up to the uh, owner to fix it. That's not cool, man. The parts aren't all that expensive, but it's a lot of labor to get in there. And if you're not mechanically inclined, then you have to pay a dealer to do it, which makes it even more of a problem. I'll probably pull the uh, fancy suspension off of it, uh, the Elka Stage 4 that I have front and rear. I'll revert it to factory, uh, especially if I'm trading it at a dealer, I'll, I'll revert it to factory because I won't get anything out of those uh, performance upgrades. Uh, if I sell it to an individual, I'll say, you know, the suspension is optional, here's the price with suspension, here's the price without, and uh, I might sell the suspension separately. I think the factory suspension had, uh, well, I don't know, maybe 4,000 miles, 5,000 miles. I'll have to look back on my service notes to remember when I swapped it. Uh, but uh, this stuff has got a couple 3,000 miles on it. And see, look at the, the hopping. See this hopping of this right wheel? And it's side to side. It's not just up and down. So there's something else wrong with it. Could be a separated belt in that tire. Could be a number of different things. But it's brand new. I mean, these tires have got maybe 150 miles on them. I saw on the Facebook forums today, the Can-Am Rikers uh, owners group, something like that. Uh, there's a guy uh, here in the U.S. that uh, just posted an odometer picture of his 2019 Riker with 90,000 miles, nine zero. Nine zero thousand, 90,000 miles, wow. That is a ton of miles Ooh, for a Riker. And mechanically, these things seem to be pretty solid. You know, the engines are solid, everything's good, but it's the, the steering and the CVTs that seem to not be so great. He mentioned in his comments that uh, the gearbox was bad on his from the factory and it was replaced under warranty around 20,000 miles uh, so that's worrisome you know don't really know what that's all about but anyway I'll uh, check in with you a little bit later Howdy! Riding one of my other toys today. Yeah, this one's getting ready to go. Bye bye. <laughs> See ya. Started up pretty good this time, just after a short ride over here. <laughs> when I started it at the warehouse earlier, it was like, yow, 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 barely turned over. This is still the original battery in this thing, though. 
2019 to uh, January 2019 is when I got it. So, yeah, it's a four year old battery now, four and change. It's still doing good. And I don't ride it much, so that's, uh, that's a good testament to the battery quality in these things. Put this over here on the charger cater. Oh, if you can get it on there. Oh, there we go. So, almost four o'clock. I'm going to play in rush hour in 102 degree temperatures right now. Okay, off we go. Buddy. Feels like a hair dryer to the face. It's so hot. Oh, can he make it? Oh, oh yeah. Let's see if I get trapped at the exit gate. I usually do on most of my motorcycles. Even this one used to get stuck. But I think they've uh, adjusted the sensitivity on the pads here. So let's see if I get lucky. Yeah, look at that. They readjusted it. It used to be uh, so insensitive that uh, the Riker wouldn't do it. None of my bikes would do it. Woohoo, go now. So, headed home on the Riker uh, after a very long hiatus of not riding this thing. I still like the machine. I wish it had worked out for me because it is fun to ride. Uh, I just I can't wrestle the uh, the steering issues on this one anymore. It's just it, I have no faith in the bike. The CVT problem and the steering just done with it. Done with it. If I knew that there was a guaranteed magic bullet to cure this thing's ails, I would buy that magic bullet and I would apply it to this and uh, keep it. But it's always hit or miss and uh, everybody's still reporting uh, steering angle sensor problems and VSS faults and all kinds of stuff even after the uh, steering and you know, the new uh, the steering update kit whatever they're calling it uh, where it's the kingpin and the washers and the tie rod ends and all kinds of stuff I mean if you're gonna have to keep putting that kind of money into it annually or you know however long the stuff lasts then it's just not a good solution in my opinion there's something inherently wrong with the design if it keeps failing like that. I guess for somebody that's buying this used, if you had to put another, you know, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks into fixing steering and, you know, suspension components and stuff on it, might not be a bad thing, you know, still not a bad deal overall if they can get it at a reasonable price. And I'm going to sell this for a reasonable price. It's not going to be low ball because I've already done all the other expensive maintenance on it. Uh, but you know, having spent so much money in this thing already, then uh, having to continue to put more in it all the time, it's just uncool. <laughs> it's freaking hot out here. But it's hot. Sweat running down my nose. That guy just went down the wrong side of the road. Gal. Crazy incompetence, man. home again home again you all know the routine 
I'm gonna clean this thing up this weekend, try to polish up the rusty bits and make it look pretty. Uh, I'll take a bunch of pictures of it and uh, I'll list it on, uh, I don't know, I might list it on Cycle Trader. I really don't want to pay them any fees. Uh, you know, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, stuff like that uh, with all of its goodies and uh, see what kind of offers I get and find out. Anyway. Thanks for joining. I will catch you all later, and I can't get it in there. <laughs> I'm going to have to start that thing up, let it leak, move it over so I can get it in. Anyway, have a good weekend, y'all.